There is new hope for people who are in the early stages of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Last week, the drug lecanemab showed promising results in slowing cognitive decline. Well, the drug may go under FDA review in the new year. Dr. Neelam Agarwal, a neurologist at Rush University Medical Center, joins us live. Doctor, good morning. Well, good morning to you. And when a patient or family gets an Alzheimer's or dementia diagnosis, it's devastating because there is no cure. What does this drug change? No, this drug changes a lot of different things uh, for patients, family members, and frankly, for the physicians. Uh, first, it's uh, giving us an indication that the drug not only changes um, the clinical course of someone taking the medication, uh, but also that the changes are occurring in the brain level. And that's something that patients and families are always asking, is it working in my brain? And clinically, are we seeing some changes? So it's, it's very encouraging for us. Are there any concerns about lecanemab? You know, with any of these types of drugs, these monoclonal antibodies, there are always concerns. And again, risk of taking the medications uh, can be many. The ones that come top of mind uh, for us in the field are the risk of brain hemorrhage, uh, small little hemorrhages that can occur in the brain. And of course, that can just worsen any changes in thinking. So hemorrhage is top of line. Um, and then other uh, changes that we see with infusions that many people get are also um, of concern. Dr. Agarwal, uh, families that are watching this right now who have mm -hmm. somebody who is affected by dementia or Alzheimer's, they're watching this right now. They're hearing mm -hmm. about lecanemab, about Agihelm, uh, another drug right. that, that ha shows promise. How soon mm -hmm. might they be prescribed by doctors? Well, I think that's a great question and, and understandably um, from the families and you know, their caregivers and including the physicians. Uh, it is a process to go through. Um, the good news is things are being expedited, which means that it's going through a, a relatively fast track. Uh, the question comes rolling it out. Um, when will it be ready to be given from pharmacy to patient? And then in what setting? And that is gonna take time. So I, you know, tell family members, just they have to be patient because these rollouts are very, very important and to make sure that everybody is educated about these medications and also that they're given safely, because that is really the utmost um, concern that we all have um, as physicians and researchers in, in this area. Rush is now enrolling patients for another clinical trial involving Alzheimer's research. Can you tell us about it? Sure. Uh, the, the study is called the AHEAD study, and uh, this study is using lecanemab within the study. The difference here is in with this study, we're really trying to uh, recruit folks that are um, at risk for developing Alzheimer's. And what I mean by that is they may have a blood marker that puts them at risk. They may have family history that puts them at risk, a genetic marker that puts them at risk, and um, even a PET imaging uh, you know, scan that shows that there's amyloid in the brain. And these folks are being enrolled in the study. They will be given um, lecanemab as part of the treatment. So this is really pushing this medication a little bit further to the pre-symptomatic state that we're really focusing on now um, a lot in our research and clinical trials. Dr. Agarwal, we've run out of time, but quickly, uh, for those who are interested, for example, I have a, a family history of dementia and, and Alzheimer's. Yep. Um, how would I know if I have the marker or not? Yeah, so I think the, it's a good question and it's coming up quite a bit. Um, there are different ways when you can find out about markers. A lot of them right now are going through the clinical trial space. But what I mean by that is people are coming in, they're being evaluated for potential trial, uh, they're taking online questionnaires and then being invited to come in. I mean, I think that's the way right now to take a look at if you have a marker. Um, and the other thing would be to really reach out to research centers to ask um, what would be the next steps to understanding if you have that marker, what's involved, before you actually may get tested. Um, I'm a big proponent for counseling about what this means and what this does not mean. So that would that's my um, advice to you right now. Good advice, Dr. Agarwal, thank you so much. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.